Christian Kersey, the past five years, has had seven interceptions, whereas Tremaine Edmonds, the past five years, has only had five. But in this video, we're going to talk about the new signings here, linebacker Christian Kersey, and also right tackle Jermaine Effetti. So we're going to get into this video. Welcome to my channel, Bills News Consolidated. Two signings by Brandon Bean going into this season I think are absolutely huge. And I want to talk about this linebacker position Christian Kirksey coming here to the Buffalo Bills and what he ultimately brings I think is a little bit better than Tremaine Edmonds in pass coverage and that's what we've been wanting here two matchup style linebackers and also Kirksey is just an ultimate pro he's a leader he's a great communicator right you listen to the games that he's been mic'd up on and he's making the players around him better and that is ultimately what the middle linebacker needs to do you need to be the leader of this defense and I really think Kirksey has that ability for the Buffalo Bills now it's just a matter of him coming here to Buffalo learning the defense learning the scheme getting Sean McDermott's trust but Jermaine Kirksey is definitely a great linebacker in coverage I think he's he's faster than Tremaine Edmonds right? And I think he's got a lot, he obviously has a lot more experience than Dotson and Spectre and Bernard. So I think that is an absolute trust factor for the Buffalo Bills. I see his ability to change direction. You know, he's, he's six foot one, six foot two, 235. So again, he's not the biggest like Tremaine Edmonds, but again, change of direction, athleticism, overall athleticism, I think Kirksey is definitely a great athlete for the Buffalo Bills to add into this mix for the middle linebacker position. Now, when you take a look the past five years, Tremaine Edmonds had six and a half sacks, right? So that's excellent. Tremaine Edmonds was always known to be a great blitzer. Kirksey, when you look at him, he had the past five years, he's had five sacks. So only one and a half sacks less than Edmonds but two interceptions more than Edmonds. So I think just those two stats really kind of give us a baseline into what each of these players are going to present to the Buffalo Bills. And then also you take a look at their frame, their overall weight, you know, it, it, it's starting to make a lot of sense here. And also their leadership. You know, I think Kirksey, just being that veteran, being a pro, being 31 years old, playing for a long time in this league, can bring a lot of experience to that position. And, uh, Jermaine Effetti, I think, is absolutely huge, right? I think a big, big tackle to come in, mix in at right tackle, back up Spencer Brown. Spencer Brown has definitely earned his spot to start at right tackle this year. And I love what Greg Cassell said on One Bills Live yesterday was stating, you know, a lot of times Josh Allen, the right tackle is right in Josh Allen's face. Like Josh Allen last year was seeing that Spencer Brown was getting beat and it was getting Josh Allen flushed, flustered and he would flush from the pocket and he would try to make a play. So I, I think if we could just solidify what Josh Allen sees in front of him, make him trust that he's not going to get hit, make Josh Allen believe like he doesn't need to leave the pocket, he's got enough time to deliver that pass, I think that's absolutely huge. And we're backing that up. We lost Tommy Doyle. We lost Bobby Hart to retirement. You know, Tommy Tommy Doyle was a big loss too. So I know Kyle Van DeMark is here too, but um, from what I saw on the tape, he's better at left side. Not saying that he won't develop as a true swing and be the right tackle. He just needs a little bit more time. But I think this year, his rookie year, I see him more backing up Deion Dawkins as a left tackle for Bills Mafia. And I know a lot of people with the Fetty are enamored that he was a first-round pick. A lot of people are down on him, saying that he's horrible. Like, why would a first-round pick not be signed to a team? Like, how is he not on a team right now? What's wrong with this guy? But, you know, we have one of the best offensive line coaches here, Aaron Cromer, knowing that Aaron Cromer has coached up so many guys, right? I mean, he's done such a great job. Like, Alec Anderson doing a great thing for this team, making this team on the practice squad last year and developing – himself over this offseason until the making this team and man Osiris Torrance young rookie Osiris Torrance completely balling out for Bills Mafia as a rookie and I give credit to Cromer Aaron Cromer this offensive line coach and I think if if Cromer sees a guy with freakish skill set right that he believes he can coach up and that's what I've always been talking about here for the, for the past several years, coachable deficiencies. 
We're only bringing in players with coachable deficiencies. We're not bringing in players that have a major hindrance, right? You, coachable deficiencies. They can do a little bit of everything and they're coachable. They're coachable deficiencies. Now, I, one thing I do want to touch on here too is also Boogie Basham. A lot of people are down on this trade with Brandon Bean actually having an interview yesterday, openly admitting some mistakes here that he's made over the past, jumping right to the Wyatt Teller trade that he jumped a little bit early on Wyatt Teller. He didn't give Wyatt Teller enough time to develop, got rid of him, and we see what's going on with Wyatt Teller. Now, we also see a guy, Cody Ford, who the Buffalo Bills drafted and also released, now actually solidified him as a, as a starter on the Cincinnati Bengals, and we know how good the Cincinnati Bengals are. Zay Jones wasn't drafted by Brandon Bean um, that first year, but he ultimately made the decision to let him go, and Zay Jones is doing pretty well in Jacksonville. So now with Boogie Basham going to the New York Giants, that Joe Shane connection, but Joe Shane was definitely in on the pick of Boogie Basham the year that we selected him. But one fatal mistake was selecting Greg Rousseau and Boogie Basham in back-to-back -back picks. Rousseau in the first round, Boogie Basham in the second round. Now at the time, it made sense because it was almost like insurance, right? Rousseau, not a lot of college experience right not we didn't know if Russo was really going to pan out to the player that he was and I think the thought was well if he doesn't we got Boogie Basham right or if Greg Russo works out and Boogie Basham doesn't you know it's kind of insurance for one another but what ended up, ended up happening is everyone worked out which should have been anticipated you should have trusted your picks and now we're in a position where we bring in Leonard Floyd, right? We bring in all this extra competition. If Boogie Basham just got the short end of the stick. You know, he would have just been buried on this depth chart again. He wouldn't have got his opportunity on the field again. And I think Brandon Bean understood this a little bit. I, I, I think he was a little bit generous to the Giants. I think a little bit generous to the situation of Boogie Basham. GMs have to do that. You got to cater to the players a little bit. So you don't want bad word going around. And I'm sure Boogie Basham wanted to see the field, just like Cody Ford was. He even said Cody Ford was upset not being a starter on this team. And that's what some players prioritize. Some pro players prioritize that want to be a starter. They want to be out there on the field, which I get. You know, I get it. But I, I absolutely love these two moves. Uh, huge moves, adding uh, an extra linebacker to this this core, another right tackle to this core. I think it's huge. Absolutely huge. Smart moves by Brandon Bean. Every GM is going to make mistakes. Overall, you cannot deny the success here in Buffalo. But if you enjoy this video, hit like, subscribe, check the links in the description, and go Bills.